in India. We see a concerning increase in anti-conversion laws, hate speech, demolitions of homes and places of worship for members of minority faith communities. Today, thanks to Ambassador Hussein, thanks to his team, thanks to our diplomats and our partners around the world, the State Department is releasing its annual report on the status of international religious freedom. Um, this is an important day for us every year and no less so this year. Uh, this report advances our vision for a future where everyone is able to choose and practice their beliefs including the right not to believe or ascribe to a faith. Respecting religious freedom reinforces other rights, like the right to speak freely, to assemble peacefully, the ability to participate in politics. Protecting this universal right empowers people to express themselves, to live up to their full potential, to contribute fully to their communities. Yet today, Religious freedom is still not respected for millions of people around the world. Pew Research Center recently found that government restrictions on religion had reached their highest global level since tracking began back in 2007. Today, governments around the world continue to target individuals, shutter places of worship, forcibly displace communities, and imprison people because of their religious beliefs. Some countries place restrictions on wearing certain types of religious dress, others enforce it. In some instances, governments are reaching beyond their own borders to target individuals because of their faith and their advocacy for religious freedom. In every region, people continue to face religious-based violence, religious-based discrimination, both from governments and their fellow citizens. They may be shut out of schools, denied jobs, harassed, beaten, or worse. Violent extremist groups also target people based on their faith. As we saw in the attacks last weekend on churches and a synagogue in Russia's Dagestan region, in which police, civilians, and a priest were killed. Since Hamas's horrific terrorist attack on Israel on October 7th, and the subsequent conflict in Gaza, both anti-Semitism and Islamophobia have increased significantly across the globe. Here in the United States, reports of hate crimes and other incidents targeting both Muslims and Jews have gone up dramatically. The department's report tracks these kinds of threats to religious freedom in almost 200 countries. For example, blasphemy laws in Pakistan help foster a climate of intolerance and hatred that can lead to vigilantism and mob violence. In Hungary, Officials continue to use anti-Semitic tropes and anti-Muslim rhetoric, and they penalize members of religious groups who criticize the government. Nine other European nations have laws that effectively ban some forms of religious clothing in public spaces. In India, we see a concerning increase in anti-conversion laws, hate speech, demolitions of homes and places of worship for members of minority faith communities. At the same time, People around the world are also working hard to protect religious freedom. We see that in the religious leaders advocating across the globe on behalf of the Baha'is who are being suppressed and persecuted in Iran and across the Middle East. In activists like Rushan Abbas, who's raising awareness about the genocide and crimes against humanity that China is committing against the predominantly Muslim Uyghurs in Shenzhen.